Hi, my name's Ven Locklear. Uh, I'll be going through a few tips and techniques I used for this Star Dynasties illustration, uh, from rough sketches to a color rough to the final illustration. Uh, in the accompanying article, I go into more depth on the overall process of creating the image. Here, I'll be focusing more on some specific Photoshop tools uh, and how I used SketchUp for this project. So for these initial roughs, uh, you may notice I have some 3D elements in there, namely the spaceships. Uh, normally I don't use 3D for roughs since it adds time, but I had already made these sort of block out models in previous Star Dynasties illustrations. So positioning them and snapping a screenshot was easier than sketching them out for the roughs. Uh, 3D can also be an organic way to find different angles and compositions for a ref. For example, I made this basic staircase model for another Star Dynasty illustration. Um, flying around and seeing different angles can be useful. It can save you time that you might spend sketching and re-sketching trying to find the best angle or composition for your image. So I ended up with that screenshot. Uh, that I used as a guide for one of the small uh, in-game illustrations. After the thumbnail has been selected, I'll use it as a base for a rough color version. As you can see, the 3D models are just a screenshot from SketchUp that I pasted in here. I'll want a few color roughs to show the client. I usually start with a gradient map. This one is, pl is applied to the background, as you can see. It starts out a darker orange and goes up to a lighter yellow, which is the basic color that I want for the planet. And in this case, I've decreased the opacity so that it's a little less intense. I added a bit of red color here as well on a color layer, added a bit more colored haze in the background. For the mid-ground scene here, I used some color layers and an overlay layer along with the blend if feature, which I'll go over shortly since when I move on to the final illustration, I actually end up redoing this part with a gradient map, map and the blend if feature together. Here you can see where I've just painted over uh, to get the right colors and values that I want. And it's the same basic idea for the foreground. So a gradient map, some color adjustments, and then painting over top. I keep all the main elements separate, the foreground, uh, midground, background, the planet, the spaceships. And that'll help as we move forward to keep everything organized. So here I'm turning on the last few layers. Uh, this is basically one of our color roughs to show the client, one of three. Um, after the color rough is approved, it's time to start digging into some of the details. Next, I'll return to SketchUp and get the spaceships in the exact spots, the right perspective that I want, and add in some of the buildings uh, that you see here. These are mostly kitbashed buildings uh, from other simple models that I was using in previous illustrations. Uh, just having a few boxes will serve the same purpose in terms of being a perspective guide, but the time I spent to kitbash these models together was probably less than the time I would have taken to design and draw them from scratch. So this may not be applicable to every project, but it was to this one. And part of that is because the industrial style of the colonies that I'm depicting uh, lend themselves to these sort of haphazard boxy shapes, whereas something like a sleek alien civilization might require more care and attention in the designs and rendering. Anyway, once I got everything where I wanted it, I took a screenshot and pasted it into Photoshop. It's not going to be rendered, it's not going to be seen in the final image, it's just going to be a guide, basically. The perspective lines are a useful model that I picked up on online. Uh, it just helps when I'm adding more details and want to make sure everything lines up. You'll see that overlaid in the work in progress image in Photoshop. 
Here's a quick example of kit bashing and how I used it on other Star Dynasty's artwork. This piece here, this piece along here, for example. These are pieces from previous models that I've used to add some quick features to this hallway. And then later on, while working on another illustration, I just flipped the first hallway model vertically and added some other pieces. It can save a lot of time, uh, but again is only appropriate in certain situations. I also sometimes use SketchUp for lighting and shadow reference. The basic version of SketchUp only has a single light source, the sun, uh, which is useful sometimes and, and uh, not useful other times. There are other drawbacks to SketchUp as well. I use it because it's intuitive for someone who hasn't done a lot of 3D modeling before. The free version suits most of my needs and the price and learning curve of other programs would be high for the relatively low amount of 3D that I use. So we've got a screenshot of our spaceships and buildings in Photoshop. Next step is building this color rough. I want to try and get as close as I can to a final look for the colors and values before I put too much work into the image. I don't want to get too far into small, time-consuming details and then realize I need to change something major. Here I'll show you a bit of the coloring techniques that I used. I've got these rocks in the background. They're basically photos that I've stretched and fitted onto the general shape that I want for the rocks. Then I'll apply a gradient map. You can see that right here. But in the distant background and for some of the shadows, we want some cooler tones, uh, cooler than the shadows up here. This is one instance where the blend if feature comes in handy. This is a grayish toned layer, painted in with a soft brush. Without the layer style, it looks like that. But dragging this handle makes it show the underlying image based on its brightness. Since I want it to blend, instead of having those hard edges, I'll hold Alt and drag this handle over. And those are a couple of the ways that I quickly color these large areas that then I'll likely paint over to get it looking exactly how I want. This is still in a color rough stage, but I have started to add in some basic details here. Right now it's just on top of the screenshot from Sketch SketchUp, and that'll all get painted over eventually. For these industrial looking details, I use some custom shapes. Again, mostly stuff that I've picked up online. There's a link to some of them in the article. I did this effect by creating my custom shape, then uh, adding uh, this darker background, then adding, let's say this is the main color of the building on a layer underneath, and then I'll just erase parts where I want other outer structural details, something like that. Here I'll show you what I did for this textured reflective floor. Basically I started out with the reflection. In this case I'll just copy and paste, flip, and then apply a motion blur. Then I'll erase a couple of the parts that are uh, blocked by this beam, for instance. Next step will be creating the texture for the floor. And in this case, I used a textured brush, but you could use a photo texture. Just a large uh, section of texture here that'll be that'll cover most of the floor. Uh, then I will create a smart object out of that and transform it to fit the floor here. And with the smart object, I can I can go back and edit the texture. I can go back and edit the perspective of it. And then the last step is just taking a brush here and adding some basic color to this texture.
Here I'll show you what I did with the planet, at least for this color rough. I have the basic uh, light shadow color in place. I just need the texture, and so I made this texture here. These lines that I pushed around with the mixer brush tool to get this sort of wavy planet texture. And then I just applied a spherize effect. And that was basically what I did for the texture starting out. In the final, however, I ended up redoing it in uh, using Photoshop's 3D features, where I made a higher resolution version of this texture uh, that I then applied to a sphere and saved an image of that, and then used that in my final image. So the last thing I'll show you here is this glow effect. It's my favorite way to create a glow effect. I'll start out with a black layer, and then I will add a gradient map that's blue going up to cyan, and that'll be on a clipping mask on the black layer. Black layer will be on screen, and then I'll basically just paint white onto the black layer, and the darker areas will end up being dark blue, and the lighter areas will be cyan all the way up to white. So if I wanted an extra engine here, just add in this white part, and then for a glow, take a soft brush and just paint a little bit, low opacity, like that. And that's a brief overview of some of the techniques I used in the creation of this illustration. I hope there was something useful for you in here or in the article.